Nikos Rentas here, mentorsapproach.com. Today's email is all about startups and dealing with people in your life while you're going through a startup. Startups are hard. Startups are not always what we see in the movies and what we hear from people who like launch off and off they go and they're making a lot of money. Startups uh, take a lot of time, to effort, energy, money being spent. There's a, an emotional roller coaster. I've talked about this in previous videos and a lot of my posts on Instagram. So uh, today's email, I'm going to go into it uh, from a perspective of how to deal with certain aspects, specifically your spouse or partner, and uh, what to do in that situation, whether you're male or female, uh, you need to be able to still show that you care about them. And in this email, we see how somebody's going through the emotions, and in their second year, they actually start having a you know a spiraling effect of uh, emotional turmoil, really, is what's going on. So here we go. Hi, Nikos. I'm in my second year of business. My startup has been moving nicely. However, I'm finding it challenging to maintain a social life. My friends call me a working alcoholic. My family members keep making comments and chirping me on how I should call it quits and go back to work. So that right there is telling me that you're not being as successful as you had told them you would be. So if I go out and I say that I'm going to be making this much money, my idea is going to work and this and this and that. Um, people are going to start doing that. They're going to start chirping you. And then from the chirping, it's going to start being, uh, okay, you know what? You need to call it quits. And they're going to start being that negative aspect. One of the things I always tell my clients and my friends who are doing startups is, or it's just a regular business, it's don't tell negative people what you're doing. Don't start there. Do not start there. What you want to be doing is going and talking to the professionals that know what they're talking about. And the, the group of people, the core group of people that love, love what you're doing and want to help you and they want to see you succeed because they're going to be the most positive people out, out of everybody when tough times come. And they all do with every business. Do not think that you have a startup and it's just going to go skyrocket because the reality is it's rare. It, it, there's a, thousands upon thousands of businesses that start and they don't go the way you expect them to go right off the bat. Uh, so he goes, my wife has been supportive. However, recently she has been very distant. That's not good. We have been married for 12 years and have two kids. The first year uh, was fine. However, these last few months, her distance has been noticeable. I try to give her more time, but I am overwhelmed with work and my growth has slowed down. So you're, you're, before you mentioned that everything's going great, but then now you're you're coming out with, hey, it's not going that great. It's not moving where it's supposed to be. Uh, they're telling you to go back to work. Clearly, cash flow is an issue, and your wife's starting to feel this. And the kids are probably, you know, if you if you're married for 12 years and you have two kids, I'm assuming they're around like that age of eight to ten, six to ten. They're realizing, hey, I'm not getting, you know, the time, the quality with my dad that I want. She definitely is, and if she's pulling back. Um, what do you do when so much negativ negativity is around? Um, you know, negativity is negativity. You, you got to just push it away. And when somebody does say something negative, you need to be m even that much more positive. I mean, I, I deal with it all the time. With, and people always come to me and they ask me this question. And it's all based on the scenario and what they're dealing with. Because sometimes you're dealing with, you know, the family members or the friends, and sometimes you're you're dealing with the coworkers, uh, and and each one has their own bias view. The details are what's going to change your direction. But in general, my my rule of thumb is when I have negative people around. I try not to ask them those serious questions where their negativity is going to affect how my future goals will be achieved. Because if I get negative, then that negativity will go into what I'm doing and I'm not going to be successful. How do you handle this pressure? When do you call it quits? So I wouldn't be looking at when do I call it quits unless you're at that place where you know, you're know you at the end game. You have no more money or money's coming up soon and you want to keep going. However, the, the priority is always your family. The priority is always your kids. You have two kids. If it was just you and your wife, I would say, hey, you need to work it out with her to figure out how you're going to do it. But when you have two kids, you have to look at what is your priority with those kids. Do you call it quits and come back to it later? Do you figure out how to sustain 
uh, and bring in more cash flow so you, sh so you can sustain that value of love that you want to provide for your family? How are you feeling inside for your family when you're doing all this stuff and your family's not getting what they need? The pressure comes because you're not succeeding at the level you expected to succeed. If you had gone into this and said, hey, I know I'm going to make 25 grand, but you know, I'm probably going to start off at three and every month I want my goals to be four, five, seven, eight, ten, eventually get that $25,000 mark. That pressure wouldn't be there. But the pressure is there because you you went in with that mentality and then it's not working out and everybody is telling you, hey, call it quits. And now that negativity is coming in on you. So I would stop talking to everybody who's negative right away. And my goal would just be my wife and the kids. Okay, my kids would be priority. So what I see from this situation is you're a typical entrepreneur that is not budgeting their time properly. They haven't budgeted anything on the uh, with regards to future uh, time management. And what I'm seeing is you need to turn back around and say, I'm gonna sit down with my wife, figure out what what needs she's not having and met, and how am I gonna meet those needs? Uh, well, first things first, you need to start redating your wife. You need to take her out. You need to schedule X amount of time with your wife, alone time. Go get a babysitter, do a surprise thing, take her out, have fun once again. Okay, and and you know you don't have to spend a lot of money on it, but do it. Okay, get a babysitter. Off you go. Do a surprise. You need to do that once a week. You need to be that man she met before you started the startup because you got to understand when you're talking about stresses like negativity and pressures from everything happening, I can see how your character well, that was up here just went and all of a sudden you're, you're rock bottom and your wife's like, man, what is this? Like, is, uh, This is not what I signed up for. So you need to start doing that right away. Start dating her again. You need to schedule one day with the kids for sure to do something fun that's not like going to sports and doing all that stuff. That's that's like like a, a package that comes with kids. You need to go out to the sporting events. You need to go take them out and and, and go to the you know the, the hockey game, the baseball game. You need to do fun things like that. You need part be part of their school life. You need to schedule that in there. Okay, and when you're looking at your wife, you need to then plan out what she needs for her. Uh, needs to be met. So you need to, to look at her needs and then you need to make sure you do it. And once you schedule that out, you'll be able to craft enough time so you can focus on your startup again so that you know your startup is getting this amount of attention. Your wife's going to get this amount, amount of attention so that you can be happy. Everybody else, do not worry about them. Okay, they're just people. They're stating their opinion. If I listen to everybody who was so negative with me over the years, I would never do anything. I, I, I wouldn't have achieved anything. And that's the reality. Like, I mean, I've dated the girls that were, you know, all gun ho and then they went negative on me. I have the friends that were all gun ho they went negative on me because they don't see the value if you're not getting paid in real time. And that's really the mentality of somebody who wants to go to work nine to five and get paid in real time. So they know they're gonna come home with a check. And as an entrepreneur, you don't know when that check's coming. You never know when that check's coming. You can budget it, you can schedule it, you can plan everything out, and you can say, I'm gonna be making this much money, but the reality is that you never know when it's gonna happen. I had a client, it took him six months to actually make a profit. And we had, we had budgeted out six months. And he was losing his mind because, hey, I'm never going to make money. And the sixth month, the Google campaign worked. Okay, The website we made for him worked. And all that coaching of how to talk to clients, okay, how to talk to clients, how to get clients to love you, and how to get clients to trust you, all those things just like started connecting for him. It took six months of development because his his idea and his product was golden, but he couldn't do the sales process and he never budgeted enough time to get a salesperson. Which brings me to the next point uh, I'm gonna leave off with, and that's what are you doing to give yourself more time in the startup? And is this a case where you need to hire somebody? And if you are cash flow uh, strapped, how do you get cash flow to come in so you can hire somebody? So those skill sets that you're struggling with, they get replaced. So I would make a list of skill sets that you really, really are good at and the ones that you really suck at. And like basically look at it and be like, okay, I suck at these. I'm going to go hire somebody who knows what they're doing in there and I'm going to bring them into the team and maybe I'll give them equity and 
to the company. Maybe I'll bring in a, a fine investment for it. I'll get another loan. And that's going to be how you do it is based on what you discuss with your wife. And you're going to go back to your wife and say, I need this much time to achieve this. And I'm going to do this and this and this. Okay. A coach call with me, I would walk through all these situations and I'd actually sit down with you and give you your different options and we could rate them. And then we give you a different mentality of how to move forward in the situation so that you can be successful. Because we meet people like this every day where they don't, the time management is killing them and it's killing their personal life. And when your personal life is getting killed, then the, the startup starts to become more of a hassle than that fun startup that you started with. And that's why it's called a startup because you're starting something new and it's always challenging. So go back, sit down with your wife and say, what do you need? What do you want me to start doing that I'm not doing? And, and maybe just start off with a nice date and do not mention anything about the startup on the date. Do not mention anything about the kids. Go out and have fun. Go do something fun. Okay, and like take her to a show, like you know, it, 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 like something that's you know, uh, Circus du Soleil or something like that. She's gonna be like, okay, entertainment, and you guys can chat and you can make jokes to each other and making fun of her a little bit, chirp her a bit, she chirps you a bit. Get her back into the spirit of love and 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 get that respect value back for yourself. And then what you'll see is after once a week doing this. Things will get better and things will start to be smoother at home uh, and, and talk to her throughout the week on what needs she needs with her and the kids and you. And then what you'll see is all the other stuff with the business will come into play because you'll know you're making the right decision when you hire somebody to relieve you of like the 15 to 20 hours or 40 hours of work that you need to put in every week that could go to your family. All right, so take a, take a thought process on what I've said and change that mindset. The thought process has to be on positive energy and how to make things start moving again and how to get things to be happy again. If you want to have a one-on-one -on -one consultation, if somebody's going through something similar, uh, please visit mentorsapproach.com, book an appointment with me, and we'll walk through for a whole hour on what's going on and how do we get the habit changes to actually be a positive, moving, uh, energetic, fun-filled adventure in a startup or in your life and anything that's going through your life. And again, my name is Nikos Rentas, and this is MentorsApproach.com. Thank you.